Does, uh, can you hear me? Yes, it works. It works perfectly. Hello, my name is Lucas, and I work for the Fed Fedora Quality Assurance. And uh, I would like to talk about uh, a recent experience uh, I made. Uh, this is not a sponsored talk, so I am going about a framework compute. However, I am not sponsored by framework in any case. Uh, I am mostly a fan of computers, but I am not a hardware specialist. And uh, I even can't solder things. I tried to learn it, but uh, uh, my soldering attempts were, you know, not, not quite good. And uh, I'm not interested in benchmarking machines, uh, so I just use it. And uh, w when I get a machine, I'm just going to use it. And I like when it works. I don't like be disrupted by uh, something that uh, that doesn't work. So uh, what I do every day is testing Fedora, and uh, sometimes our team gets various pieces of hardware to test. Somebody says, "Please, could you test Fedora on this hardware?" And uh, we have had experience that it was a difficult and tough task to do sometimes because the hardware was not Fedora compliant. So it uh, took a lot of work to make Fedora working on the hardware before we even started to test that Fedora works on it. Uh, we had to do some stuff. I am not very good at fiddling with hardware, as I told you, but my colleagues are quite keen, so they really are interested in fiddling with, with that stuff. And uh, so we, all the time, we succeed. Like, we put Fedora on it somehow. And uh, recently, we also bricked one device. So when we got an offer to test the framework computer with Fedora, uh, we were a little bit hesitant about it, and uh, the expectations were not high, I must say. And uh, we discussed this on a, on a list, uh, who is uh, available for testing framework computers, and uh, not many people were like, yeah, I want to do it. So in the end, I said, okay, I will do it. And, uh, yeah, so this is the process of, of doing it. So what is the framework computer? If you don't know, uh, it's a computer uh, that is produced by a company called Framework based in San Francisco. And uh, they want to produce modular, repairable, customizable, sustainable, lightweight, and portable, and user-owned computers, they claim. And I was thinking, when reading this information on the website, I, I was like, oh, this is, uh, so can framework be to hardware what Linux is to software? Like, can I use my computer and change it to my likings? Is, is it something new? Let's see. Uh, Framework advantages, again, according to the website, this is marketing language. You can see that uh, transparent regarding the sourcing of materials, ability to upgrade and repair, open ecosystem, and so on and so on. You can visit the website if you, if you want to. Uh, what they have, they have two versions of laptops, uh, a smaller version, which is this one I am using right now. It's the frame, Framework 13, and uh, the bigger version based on Intel, AMD, and Chromebook. And for the future, they uh, now announced the RISC-V platform, uh, which I am pretty interested in if uh, that's out. Unfortunately, Framework doesn't ship to the Czech Republic where I live, so you can't go and order. But uh, 
I was given uh, the option to receive the framework as a personal mail, and uh, we got it donated by the company, so I didn't have to pay for it. Uh, it came in a plain box, just with the framework on inscription on it, no colors, no printing. The box was good. The, the, com the computer fit inside very perfectly, so it couldn't be damaged, possibly. And uh, I got four expansion cards, a power adapter, an American one, which I had to change, and a screwdriver. The screwdriver, uh, as they say, is the only device that you need to modify your laptop. And uh, I used it to modify it because I only got eight gigabyte of RAM, and eight gigabyte of RAM is uh, not enough for me, because I tend to run virtual machines. And I said, uh, my approach to framework testing will be that I will take it as my everyday laptop, and I will use it for work, and I will use it for testing Fedora, as I would do on my Lenovo laptop that I also own, and that I also like. So, uh, and I take Lenovo as a good standard of, uh, of what computers should be, actually, for myself. So you can see the specs of this particular one. Uh, it's the minimum you can get. Uh, the more money you pay, the better, uh, the better uh, stuff you get, I mean, in terms of uh, amounts. So you could have 16 gigabyte RAMs or 512 gigabyte storage, and so on and so on. Uh, the display is quite interesting because of the 3 to 2 aspect ratio and quite a high resolution, which is more than a full HD. Uh, but I realized sometimes I need glasses. I'm getting old, so I had to... Uh, bump the fonts a little bit in, in GNOME to, to be able to see it properly. And uh, you have stereo speakers, you have two microphones, you have a uh, combo headphone jack that you can use for uh, listening and talking. Uh, the camera has full HD resolution, fingerprint reader is there, and uh, there is a USB-C power adapter. And uh, it's very small, but actually, I have not experienced any problems with it. Uh, the build is quite sturdy, you know. It's not plastic. Uh, it's a metallic, metallic stuff. Uh, so it really is a nice piece of hardware. And uh, what is good, you can buy expansion cards. You can see that there are four slots here, and you can take it out and change it. So uh, my slots are USB-C, USB-A, uh, and uh, another USB-A, and a HDMI. The problem is, some of the slots do not support everything. I didn't know that. So when giving a talk a couple of days earlier, I plucked the HDMI to, to the computer and nothing happened. And uh, I thought, ah, so this is something I will talk about on the vlog, but it was my own stupidity because the website said, we support HDMI on slot one and two and I had my HDMI uh, expansion port uh, connected to slot number three, so yeah. So you can get uh, an external drive, you can get another audio, an Ethernet port, HDMI display port, SD or micro SD reader, and USB A and Cs. Uh, you can replace main boards, modules, keyboards, displays, various parts. You can customize the colors of the laptop uh, by changing some parts of it. They have different colors. And uh, what is good, so if you don't like your Intel laptop anymore, 
you can just switch the main board and have an uh, have an MD, uh, AMD uh, yeah AMD uh, compute uh, out of it, or you'd be able to switch the main board and get a RISC-V compute out of it. So you can uh, use an Intel computer on on Friday, and you can use a RISC-V on Saturday, and you could use uh, yeah. Which is, I think, a great thing for testing, basically, because you only have one machine and you can change the modules and test the platforms as you wish, right? Uh, changing the RAM modules, for example, indeed was very easy. Just use the screwdriver, open the chassis, uh, put it out, put it back, close the chassis, off you go. No problems experienced with that. You can change keyboards, displays, displays. If it cracks, open it, unclick the display, click on another display, you go. Uh, probably in the future, when you want to upgrade to a newer processor or something, you just uh, open the chassis, unclick the main board, put in a new one, and off you go. Uh, yeah, build is solid, as I said, quite lightweight. Uh, it opens to eight, 180 degrees, for sure. I tested this. I didn't, I didn't want to uh, go further because uh, I usually love my stuff and I don't want to test it behind its, uh, its limits. And uh, camera and microphone have hardware switch off buttons, so you don't have to put stickers on it. You can just close it and uh, it's switched off. Nobody can hear you and nobody can watch you. Pardon? Oh yeah, I don't know. In the Czech Republic, we don't have them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so why Fedora? Uh, framework officially supports Fedora. Uh, and they also support Ubuntu LTS. They claim that the Ubuntu LTS is a little bit better than Fedora because uh, in one point, Fedora is announced as a little bit risky, while Ubuntu LTS is announced as stable. However, Ubuntu LTS is something that should stay the same for, the ho for a long time but we evolve and change every six months. So basically, we are pretty much supported. And this was also to prove the support uh, that uh, we would test it. And we were asked to provide help and uh, Framework was willing to provide laptops for testing. So far, we have the Ryzen and the Intel version. Uh, the laptops, are normally delivered with Windows or you could, uh, uh, or without an, an operating system. So mine came with Windows. I was a little bit disappointed because I expected a computer without an operating system, but uh, Windows didn't last long. And uh, immediately I installed Fedora. In Brno, we offer install fests for students, they usually come with laptops with Windows and they want Fedora double boot with Windows, dual boot. We test it, it works, but I haven't tested it here. Uh, I took the standard process of installation, just download the Fedora Workstation 39, created a live USB, booted the live image, install it, start using the laptop, all hardware components worked out of the box. Using Fedora on it was flawless. There were no significant problems seen, so what worked on Lenovo worked on uh, Framebook. Uh, I only experienced one annoying behavior. When I placed my Windows on, a, on laptop screen and I connected it to an external monitor, and I maximized uh, the window on the laptop screen, so it started to fall apart. Um, and uh, finally, it became white. 
and you couldn't see anything on the laptop screen. If you moved the window back to the external monitor, then it got repaired somehow and you could use it. I reported it and uh, through updates, uh, this, was, this was fixed. So uh, I don't experience this one anymore. Firmware are easily available through GNOME software, so you don't have to worry about that. I only use standard GNOME because uh, before GNOME I was a Fluxbox fan, so I don't like uh, fancy stuff uh, like many extensions and so on. So for me the standard GNOME is uh, efficient. I had to switch the fingerprint reader, not because it wouldn't work, it works perfectly fine. I just like typing a lot and uh, I am using an external keyboard, so moving my head uh, to, uh, to the fingerprint reader all the time, I would want to run sudo or something, just uh, wasn't, wasn't good enough for me. Uh, the RAM was eight gigabytes, enough for office work and browsing, but for my virtual machines, I uh, needed some more, so I s changed it. Uh, for two 16 gigabytes modules and got 32 in the end. As I say, uh, no problems. Uh, what testing I was doing, uh, we perform release validation testing, which basically is we take an image and we do tests. Uh, we have a collection of tests that we use for every re release and when they work, we say the release is fine. So I took all the test cases and I run them uh, on this framework to see whether they also work. I did it on stable Fedora, which I knew was okay and uh, error-free. And uh, I didn't have any, any problems. So installation, post-installation, basic functionality, desktop, upgrades to Fedora 40 beta, no problems, upgrades to Fedora 40 final, no problems, the computer now is running Fedora 40. And uh, I was using the laptop in daily routines of mine, as I promised, so it was not just I take the laptop and run the tests and close it and put it aside, but I really tried to lift with it, uh, to live with it. And uh, so office work, browsing, programming, scripting, uh, however, I have not been compiling uh, and uh, doing some graphics and some audio production on Fedora. Everything was fine and the computer could be, could be used. So the conclusion of the talk is, I think there is a device finally that, uh, that doesn't require you to throw it away if it breaks or if you knew something better, you only can change the stuff. You can live with the laptop uh, for some prolonged period of time compared to, to the standard machines, which maybe is good for the planet or maybe which is good for, for us, for those who like their stuff and uh, for example when I sold my last car I, I had to cry a little bit. Uh, I tried to hide it so that the new owner wouldn't see it. The car was so good but you know. And uh, I think it compares to machines by Dell or Lenovo. I, I don't know whether I should have, should have said that but uh, Lenovo's I've been using, or Dell's I've been using, these were all good computers. Maybe, maybe it's not as good as it in terms of new hardware and new technology that we saw just recently, but it still is a good piece of, good piece of work, and I, I say thumbs up framework. Uh, so if you think about something like that, maybe you can Give it a try. Thank you. If you have questions.
Testing, testing. Have you tried uh, suspend or hibernate with the framework? Uh, yeah. So I know that suspend is when I close the lid, the computer goes to sleep, but eats up memory, right? It's flawless. No problems with that. I haven't tried hibernation because it's officially not supported in Fedora. Uh, but uh, what is supported in Fedora works fine. I'm just curious if you've ran the hardware certification um, program to see if it's anything taints the kernel or does anything crazy. I know this is taking it a further step into RHEL, but uh, you know, I'm just curious of how fully functional this is. Well, uh, I don't know. Because uh, what kind of certification? If you haven't, I'd connect with Rob Landry in the certification team in no, within REL. No, no, I haven't done it. Yeah, he could do is getting access to this, I imagine. And uh, Wei Fu would be interested from the Risk Five side of the fence. Um, he's at Red Hat as well, and he does Fedora and uh, Risk Five and ARM and a whole lot of other things. Oh, well, you can, uh, you can show me how, and uh, I can do it. Um, so as you're going through the testing, um, like, what, what, uh, what level of communication do you have with the framework team? Is it something where like, like you guys are emailing back and forth, or is there a specific process? Uh, I am in touch with their Linux lead, and uh, when I find a problem, I usually, he is the first person for me to contact. But uh, they also have a nice forum where you could, uh, you could enter questions, you could discuss problems, something like we have in Ask Fedora. So they have something like that, based also on discourse. And uh, you could also ask Fedora specific questions. Uh, the, the forum is quite, uh, quite a living place. I might have missed it, but did you talk about um, in your testing battery life of the particular model of framework that you had? And then also, since it was mentioned earlier about uh, you testing the sleep function, um, some machines do better when they are put to sleep under Linux as far as barely sipping any battery at all. Um, I know some Windows machines, you put them into sleep and they'll still suck the battery dry within a day. Uh, so what was your experience? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so uh, again, uh, I haven't uh, closely monitored the time, but uh, the laptop uh, can be, s this is one interesting thing. You can set uh, in BIOS, well actually BIOS, but it's UFI based, but uh, the, th the setting thing that I would be used to call BIOS you could set up the level of uh, the, the battery being charged. So originally it was set to 60%. Uh, I set it to 80 because 60% was uh, quite low. And the laptop only charges up to 80%. The problem is I can't do it in GNOME. I have to go to the BIOS and set it up there. So there is no, for example, no good and easy way to charge it to 100% before you leave. But uh, when uh, the battery is uh, uh, filled up to 80%, uh, GNO monitor says that, uh, the, the energy monitor says that uh, it has about five hours of battery life. And uh, it's not the strongest battery, so you would be able to purchase a bigger one for the for the computer if you needed it. And uh, if I close it and leave it, so it will be probably after three days it be drained. But uh, it, it won't be drained if you leave it overnight. So that's okay, with me at least. Okay, so I think it's time for the uh, snack break. So let's thank the speaker. Thank you. Enjoy your break.